Hey, what's up, YouTube family? It's Pastor KJ from Radiant Church, and I'm so excited for you to join us for today's sermon. We have such a powerful sermon in store. I believe it's going to strengthen you, challenge you, and encourage you. So get ready for this message. Also, share this message with friends, family members, coworkers, everyone you know. I believe it will change their life. Get ready to jump into the Word of God with us today. So a couple things that um, I studied and I ended up seeing is um, the power of the mind. The power of the mind, that your mind is powerful. And the thing we think about the mind is we don't think our mind is powerful. And the thing is, when they put you on a machine and they, and, and they, and they put the sensors on your head, your thoughts actually move the needle. Like if you're sitting there not thinking, then the needle's still. You start thinking it moves the needle because thoughts are things. Everyone say thoughts, thoughts. Are, are things. They're real things. They're real seeds. Thoughts are things, and whenever you think, something is happening inside of you. Something is moving. You move this direction, you move that direction. It's moving the Tao. Your thoughts move the Tao. They are real. They are things, and you have to guard your heart, and you have to be aware of your thoughts and conscious of your thoughts because your thoughts form, and they shape your life. They are real, real things. Let me show you how real your thoughts are. So there was a there was hundred people and they all had a headache. They all had a headache. They gave them all a sugar pill and they told them it was Advil. And the crazy thing is, most of the people that took the sugar pill was nothing in it to cure their headache. Their head stopped hurting immediately after they took the sugar pill. Now how could you lose a physical headache over a fake pill? How is that possible? It's possible because they thought when they took that pill, I'm healed, I'm going to feel better. And they started being healed and feeling better, not because of the pill, but because of their mind. And I'm telling you, there are so many people in this room that's dealing with things, experiencing things. Some of you guys got health problems and you went to the doctor and they looked at you and they can't tell you what's wrong with you. And I want to tell you what's wrong with you. It's probably your thinking. Some of us walk in stinking thinking and stinking thinking will always create a stinking life. So you have to be aware of what you're thinking about. You got to think about what you're thinking about because what you think decides who you are. Your thoughts are powerful. They move the needle. Thoughts are things. They are real. And they're not to be played with. They're to be respected because they will change your life for the better or for the worse. As a man thinking, so is he. You will be your thoughts. So guard your thoughts, guard your heart, guard your eyes, guard your ears, because you will live out of what you think. You would receive what you perceive. You have to be careful because what you think doesn't determine who you are, but what you think determines who you think you are. And whoever you think you are, that's what you will express. That's what you will live out of. That's what you will experience. It's not about it's not about who you actually are, it's about who you think you are, because in life, you will get what you think. The man that thinks he can and the man that thinks he can't are both right. If you think you can't, you can't. But if you think you can, you can. And it reminds me of when I was a kid and I saw one of my favorite movies of all time. And one of my favorite movies of all time is Space Jam. Oh, come on, somebody. Welcome to the Space Jam. And the one LeBron James did was not as good as the one Michael Jordan did because MJ's the GOAT. You know what I'm saying? MJ's the GOAT. So in Space Jam, it was something so powerful to happen. Bugs Bunny knew something that no one else knew. He knew the power of the mind. He knew the power of the mind. So the, the Monstars was beating the Looney Tunes. They, they was just stomping on them. I mean, they was tearing them up. And it was halftime. And the Looney Tunes was like, we're going to die. It's over. We're going to lose. Everyone's just, just messed up in their head. Let's quit. Let's leave. And they're just in there in array. And then Buzz got a great idea. Buzz said, hmm, they have no faith. They have no belief. They think we're going to lose, which means we're going to lose. What can I do to get them what can I do to give them faith? And then Bucks thought about it. He said, they don't have faith in themselves, but they have faith in Michael. So what Bucks did is he got Michael's drink, 
or not even Michael's drink, a drink that perceived to be Michael's, and he wrote down Michael's secret stuff. And when he wrote down Michael's secret stuff on the drink, he went and he gave it to the Looney Tunes. They got the drink that was oh, Michael's secret stuff. Ah, oh, Michael's secret stuff. Ah, oh, Michael's secret stuff. Ah, oh, Michael's secret stuff. And I'm telling you, they came out after halftime. They had motorcycles on the court. They was dunking the ball, stealing the ball. They was going crazy because they had Michael's secret stuff. Church, I got news for you. You have Jesus' secret stuff. It's called the Holy Spirit and power. You can walk in to that room and say demons got to flee. I'm telling you right now, you can walk into the hospital and pray for healing because you have Jesus' secret stuff and that's the Holy Spirit and power. He has empowered you and blessed you to walk in victory. You have Jesus' secret stuff and if you believe that the Holy Spirit indwells you, if you believe the word of God encompasses you, if you believe that God can set you free, he does because who the son sets free is free indeed. But you have to know the truth before you experience it. The mind is powerful. So today I want you to take your mind back. Because the truth of the matter is, some of you have been seized. You've been seized. What does it mean to be seized? To be seized means that someone has broken inside of your castle and took control. That's what it means to be seized. And I've talked to so many people, and they say, Pastor KJ, I can't stop thinking negative. I can't, I can't stop thinking about my past. I can't stop thinking about what happened to me. I can't stop thinking about the traumas that happened to me when I was a little girl or when I was a little boy. I can't stop. And the reason why they can't stop is because these thoughts just permeated their heart for so long that the negative thoughts took control. And it seized their will. Your will is your ability to decide. Your will is your ability to think. Your will is your ability to choose. And when you lose that, you have been seized. And if your heart has been seized by the enemy, you have to get control back. And how do you get control back? With truth. Everything the enemy has ever done against you is a lie, and you get control back with the truth. Um, If you have your Bibles, go to Proverbs chapter 4. We're going to break this down quickly. Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. I'll give you guys a second to get there. Y'all doing good this morning? So, we're going to expound on the scripture we read last week. It says, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. So it's saying guard your heart, because your whole life flows from your heart. Your heart creates your life. Then it says, keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. So the first thing the Bible is saying is it's saying guard your heart. Guard your heart. And when I think about guarding the heart, I think about a quarterback. I think about a quarterback. Your heart is your quarterback. And I think about an offensive line. And the offensive line or your thoughts is the word of God. It's the spirit of God. It's the Holy Spirit. And your heart is to sit behind God, sit behind the Holy Spirit and sit behind your positive thoughts on the word of God. And it's to sit there. And those things are to guard your heart, because if your heart is penetrated, your heart can be perverted. Your heart don't discriminate. It can go good. It can go bad. It can go happy. It can go sad. It can go up. It can go down. And you have to guard it. And sometimes when your heart has been seized, it requires more work. It requires more work. And the best thing you can do to guard your heart is have proper beliefs. So I want to come for your belief system just for a second. The Bible says that if you keep your mind on God, you can have perfect peace. I got a question. Do you believe that? Do you believe that you can actually have perfect peace? Do you believe if I told you you could never have another bad day again in your life? Do you believe that? Because guess what? If something bad happened to you, that's a bad moment. You decide if it becomes a bad day. 
When you have a bad moment, if you sit and you meditate on it and you soak on it and you water it and you feed it, that moment becomes a day and that day can become a week and that week can become a month and that month can become a year all because you couldn't fight the moment. Don't let a bad moment become a bad day. No, 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 no. You have to choose this day whom you're going to serve. You have to choose this day. Blessing or cursing. You have to choose this day. And I choose to have a good day. I choose to bless God. I choose to trust God. I choose to walk in faith. I choose to trust the word. You have to choose. So the first thing you have to do to guard your heart is your beliefs. It's your belief. If the enemy has your belief system, you're toast. If he has your belief system, well, you know, we all have bad weeks. We all have bad days. I mean, so sometimes you're just not going to feel better. Sometimes you're just going to be down. Sometimes life just happens to you. I'm telling you, when the Holy Ghost come upon you, you're supposed to happen to life. I'm tired of letting life happen to me. And so many times we're sitting here waiting on life to happen to us. We're waiting on the next bad thing. When is this going to happen? When is that going to happen? When are they going to come against me? When am I going to fail? When am I not going to be able to pay my dear bills? And you have to be thinking, no, no, no. When am I going to be able to walk in power? When am I going to be able to bless God? When am I going to be able to break generational curses? When am I going to be able to launch into my destiny? I'm not waiting on bad. I'm walking in the good. I'm trusting God. And then it talks about... Do not let perversity or perverse or perverse things on your tongue. It says keep your tongue far away from it. See, the Bible says not only that you would eat the fruit that goes into your mouth, the Bible says you would eat the fruit that goes out of your mouth, which means you actually eat what you speak. You eat what you speak. See, no one's never going to love me. That's what you're going to eat now. See, everyone in my family deal with this drug addiction. That's what you're going to eat now. See, my kids have never loved me because I didn't love my parent. That's what you're eating. And because it's what you're eating, it's what you're experiencing. You will eat the fruit that goes out of your mouth. Keep your mouth far away from perverse things. And sometimes you got to disconnect from people. Sometimes you got to take a step back. Sometimes you got to break off relationships because I can't allow perverse things to be on my mouth. I'm going to guard my mouth because when I guard my mouth, I guard my heart because what comes out of my mouth boomerangs back to my heart. So if I speak fear, fear gets on my heart. If I speak doubt, doubt gets on my heart. If I speak worry, worry gets on my heart. If I speak failure, it gets on my heart. I'm going to guard my tongue so I can guard my heart. And there's just some people you can't be around because their tongue is too defiled. They're always speaking death. They're always speaking negativity. They're always speaking fear. I have to guard my mouth. I have to guard it. Because Jesus said it's not what goes into a man's mouth that defiles him. It's what comes out of his mouth. What are you speaking, church? Because what you speak is what you eat. And what you eat is what you live. They say that a person is what they eat. True, you are. Whatever you eat, and that's what comes out of your mouth is what you are. And a person is also what they think. You are what you think. Which means if you have bad thinking, you will have bad living. You have fearful thinking, you will have fearful living. You have worried thinking, you will have worried living. Guard your heart. And you guard it by guarding your mind. Then it says, let your eyes look straight. Fix your gaze directly before you. Why is he saying that? It's because the devil is always out to stumble you. So I said, you got to lock your gaze on Jesus and you have to walk straight. You can't be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. You can't be pulled in every direction. You have to keep your eyes on Jesus. Because if the devil can't get in front of you and stop you, he will get behind you and push you too fast. And if the devil cannot stop you on your path, he will come to knock you off your path. And you have to stay in your lane and run your race. See, in this season, the Lord has given me a clear word. He said, son, I'm about to take this church to places you've never dreamed of. And he said, I can do it now because you get it. I'm like, God, what do I get? He said, focus, focus. Sometimes you have to turn your frequency to heaven and block out all the other noise. I'm listening to God. I'm listening to the spirit. I'm walking in truth. 
I see my King Jesus. I feel the glory of God. I feel the Shekinah glory. I will not be waver and I will not be moved. I'm standing firm on the promises of God. And I won't let a devil, a witch, or a warlock knock me off my path. I'm grounded. And too many of you guys, you're walking with God, then all of a sudden family say something. You all over here in drama. And you all over here in mess. And you all over here. And God is saying, stay in your lane. All of a sudden, you're running good. All of a sudden, sin coming. Now you're all off here on sin. And now you're all over here. And now you're all over there. And you're not keeping your gaze fixed on Jesus. And I want to lock my gaze on Jesus. I want to lock my eyes on him. And I want to run for the prize of life. And I will not be knocked off my path by the enemy. I'm going to protect my feet. Everyone said, protect your feet. Some of you guys are going places. You got to stop going. Some of you guys, well, I'm just going here to hang out with my friends and we're just going here to have a drink. No, protect your feet because the enemy will put your feet places so he can get to your heart. And if you want to stop the enemy from getting to your heart, you have to first guard your feet because your feet will walk you into brokenness. Your feet will walk you into abusive relationships. Your feet will walk you into all kinds of things that are designed to break you. Oh, give our king a shout of praise. So then it says, keep your feet from evil. Keep your feet from evil. Some of you guys are falling because you overestimate your holiness. You overestimate your holiness. You feel like you are holy enough to be in certain environments. You're holy enough to entertain certain conversations. You're holy enough to, to, to violate boundaries. You are overestimating your holiness. And the truth of holiness is true holiness has wisdom attached to it. In other words, I'm not using holiness as a muscle. Holiness is a response of the, it's, a, it's my response to God's goodness. It's my obedience and my sacrifice towards my king. It is not my muscle. My muscle is my wisdom. The wisdom of God is your muscle. In other words, it's not about how you can go Netflix and chill and not hook up. How about we don't Netflix and chill? It's not about how you can go to the hangout and don't smoke. Let's not go. That's why when people are on drugs and they go off to a home, the reason why they get off drugs ain't for the program and we're sitting here confessing things. That's all good. That's not why they get free. They get free because they broke from that environment. They broke away from those people in those places. That's why whenever God got ready to use someone, the first thing he said is, get away from your kinfolk. He always isolated because God cannot change you and penetrate you until he isolates you. He always used isolation before transformation. You will not be transformed into the new. Keep planting your feet in the hole. I remember church when I got saved. I would never forget it. It was the most dramatic thing ever. My friends thought I lost my mind. They thought I went crazy. They was like, what's wrong with him? We gotta help him. Cause I got saved. And when I got saved, I kept hanging out with them. And they're forcing me to go drink and they're forcing me to go to the club and trying to force me to smoke. And, and just all this worldliness, all this perversion. And I just remember like, okay, I'm so godly. I read so much Bible, I can withstand this. And then I would go back and I would backslide. I look like Michael Jackson in a thriller video. I'm just backsliding, just all, just all back into my old life. And then I finally got it. I said, I'm not gonna become the new me in old environments. So then I did something really, really wise. And perhaps it's the reason why I'm here today. I said, you know what? I'm breaking off every tie. So I reached out to all my friends and said, hey, guys, I'm taking the season. You guys won't be able to reach me. Some of my best friends was like, man, we cool. I got to be able to reach you. I'm like, I'm sorry. I have to do this for my spirit. So I went and I bought another phone. I gave it to my mom, close family members, and the godly people in my life. My old phone, I turned it off. Anyone that knows me knows it's true. I turned it off for six months. I still got that number today. I turned it off for six months. And I walked away from everything, the old girlfriend, the old friends, the old life. I turned my phone off. And the only area the enemy had was the school cafeteria. Everyone would surround me at the school cafeteria. So I said, you know what? I'm going to the football field. Every day, 
I got my lunch and I went to the football field and I just listened to sermons all lunch long. And I guarded myself from perverse environments and I changed. I saw bondage break off, fear break off, generational curses break off, lies break off, the snare of the devil break off, addictions break off, pornography break off, lust break off. I saw all these things break and I was a new person. And all the people that criticized me and doubted me, God used me to go lead them to Christ. They were all at my youth group, all on their face, all on, all, all, all rededicating themselves to God because I was willing to take a stand. I don't know how severe it is. I don't know how big your bondage is. I don't know what you're dealing with. But sometimes because of what you deal with, the resistance has to match the same energy. Some of you guys have been through hell's kitchen. You're going to need to be in heaven's living room now to match that energy. Some of you guys have been dealing with this for 20 years. You're going to need to immerse yourself in the presence of God until the chain breaks. How far are you willing to go? So I'm going to give you a couple ways to guard your heart, and I'm going to get ready to close. The first way you guard your heart is by guarding your eyes. Everyone say your eyes. Church, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? Too many of you guys are watching shows you shouldn't be watching, watching things on TV you shouldn't be watching, watching reels and TikTok and Instagram reels and watching all this stuff, and you are ingesting all of this junk. And I'm not trying to be up here self-righteous, holier than now, and say you can't watch these things, but I'm telling you that you will start doing what you watch. I remember something real simple. I remember me and my wife will... We we're watching uh, Cobra Kai, you know what I'm saying? And I'm an old Karate Kid fan. And I noticed something so crazy. Like we got there watching Cobra Kai, I was walking around the living room just, ah, you know? Like I was ready to fight somebody. I was like, I'm in a grocery store, like let's go. And I realized like I'm an idiot, like what's going on? And I'm over here ready to do karate, I'm ready to fight. Like you start watching this stuff and all of a sudden it just starts coming out of you. I've been watching the finals. <laughs> like my heart produced, I've been watching basketball. I'll be walking through the house like this, y'all be like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like hanging out with a friend, you know, you just bump them, hit them with a little layup. They're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I've been watching basketball, you know? We literally immediately start reproducing what we see. This is why we have to protect the eyes of our children. This is why we have to protect their hearts. This is why we can't be going to places supporting demonic agendas and trying to pervert our kids. We ain't going because we have to protect their eyes. We have to protect it. We're not bending. We're not settling. We're not caving. I have to fight for my eyes because if the enemy can put it in your eyes, he can deposit it into your heart. The next thing, the next thing, and this is the biggest thing. And for me, this was the hardest thing. The last thing I was able to get delivered from was the music, the music, the music, the music, the music. Some of you guys are listening to toxic music and you have to stop. You have to stop because this music will shape your mind. It would mold your heart and it would be expressed out of your life. See, guys, you got to understand something. I watched an interview one time on um, people that did murders just to figure out like what happened. And a lot of them were normal people like you and I. And I heard stories like I was just meditating on on, on heavy metal music and I was just meditating and I would listen to the music and I would get lost in the music and I would visualize myself hurting people and when something happened, second nature, I hurt somebody and I didn't know what happened. And it's because they meditated so long on this music, they can be desensitized. Their conscience became seared. And as their conscience was seared, they no longer had that conviction to say, oh, this isn't right. Oh, I shouldn't do this. Oh, I shouldn't go there. Your conscience can be seared. Your conscience is what God put inside of you. It's that alarm inside of you to say, this ain't right. And if you keep ignoring it, you will sear it. And if you sear it, it doesn't work no more. And if it doesn't work, it can't stop you from foolery. That's how people do these things. Just because the moment you think of hurting somebody, you know it's not right. But if you keep suppressing that and keep listening to this stuff over that, all of a sudden you're living out murder. You're living out envy. You're living out jealousy because out of your heart flows. Out of it flows. 
And I would watch these documentaries and all of a sudden they would condition their mind into devious things and it would lead to doing devious things. Because the thing is, your heart can get out of bounds. That's why the Bible says protect yourself when you're a youth from lust and perversion. And here's why you got to protect yourself is when you open the door to perversion and lust. And some of you guys didn't open that door. Someone else came and invaded you and opened that door in your life. Now all of a sudden you're exposed to things you should have never been exposed to. And now you have cravings and appetites you should have never had. God, you slept with too many women, dude. And now all of a sudden your wife's not enough because you have these images of all these people you slept with and you can't connect no more. It's because you went so far out of bounds. Some of you guys, you watched too much stuff on TV. You looked at too many magazines and you went so far out of bounds now. Your conscience is messeared. And now you're hungry for something you should have never tasted. You're hungry for something you should have never tasted. And now you're fighting cravings and appetites that should have never been awakened. And because you have these cravings and appetites, somehow you think they're justified. Well, I just feel this way, and I just feel that way, and I just crave this, and I just desire this. Doesn't matter. Cravings can be demonic. They can be. And here's the danger of the music, church. Here's what makes the music so dangerous. Music has power that nothing else in the universe has. It has a power that nothing else has. Everyone say, what is it, Pastor? I'm going to show you. Music has the power to do something that nothing else in the world can do. Music can't, let me put it this way, you can't be guarded from music. You can't be guarded from music. What that simply means, church, is music has the power to bypass the conscious mind and go straight into the subconscious. That's the power of music wields. And Satan is the god of music. It was music that puffed him up. It was music that turned him into the devil. He's the god of music and he knows something about music. You cannot reject music. You cannot reject it. Right now, if I ask you, think of a song you hate. Just think of it right quick. Think of a song. You're like, oh, I hate that song. I give you a song I used to hate. I used to hate this song called You a Jerk. The sad part is, You a jerk, I know. Like, I know the song, in the dance. How do I hate this song and know it? It's because no matter how much I hate it, I don't have to choose it because it chose me. I cannot reject music. Science will show you music cannot be rejected. It goes straight past your mind into your heart. Have you ever been writing down the radio and you heard a song just passively, and then all of a sudden you're walking through the day and you're just kind of singing that song? Like, I'll be listening to that song, you know, the song that we sung earlier, um, It Is Finished, and I'll kind of hear it passively, and I'll be be walking through the house, and I'm just like, "Uh, no more fear, anxiety, hello, joy, and perfect. And I'm like, where did this come from? It went straight past my mind into my heart. You cannot reject music. I'm going to prove it to you, you can't reject music. Music has the power to go to your heart, and it can literally shift your emotions without you deciding or choosing it. CJ, do me something really... Really, do me a favor, CJ. CJ, can you play me something sad, just low and and just sad, just just kind of pull it down a little bit. Man, when I lost my cousin, man, you know, you know, now you just start thinking about, like, you see how it's shifting you? I want to give an altar call right now. I don't want to preach the rest of my message. It's just changing your mood. Man, there's lost people in the world. We got to reach them. Like, see, hold on, man. Like, <laughs> I don't supposed to be affected. I'm up here trying to make a point. He didn't took me off path. He shifted me with his music. I didn't choose it. I didn't decide it. I didn't lean into it. He shifted me. Now, CJ, play me some upbeat, some joyful. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay, what's up? Okay. I see some smiles in the room. How you was just finna cry, now you laughing? You was just about to cry. CJ, stop, you made me start dancing now, hold on. Immediately, I, I shifted from normal to sad to happy in 30 seconds because of music. 
and I could not choose it, it immediately penetrated my heart and changed my mood and feelings. And this is why this enemy got perverted, because when he was in heaven, he would play happy songs and the angels would jump and they would dance and they would sing. And he was like, look at how I yield heaven. Then he would play sad songs and the angels would fly around, flapping their wings and crying. And he's like, look how I move heaven. I control with my music. And that's why Andrew Fletcher said something so powerful. He said, if I wanted to control a nation, give me the songs of the nation. I could care less who write the laws. The nation follows the music. The generation follows the music. Our children follow the music. You will follow the music. And if the music is degrading women, you will walk in a, de a degraded state because that's what you injected inside of yourself. If the men are belittling women in the music, you're going to belittle women because that's what you're eating on. You cannot reject music. CJ, let's, let's see. I want to play some old school songs that maybe they haven't heard in a very long time. Let's see if that still is imprinted on their heart. CJ, play us something. Yeah. How I wonder what... I ain't heard this! Time out. Some of y'all ain't heard that in years. But you just jump straight in. Twinkle, twink. Like, how do you jump in like that? Because it was played on your heart when you were a little kid and it never left. And it's just waiting to be activated. What happened when lies are played into you and then someone says something to you and these lies have been waiting to be activated? Because depression was played over you and now you're going through hardship and depression was sitting there waiting to be activated because it was played into you. She said, play us something else that maybe we would know from our childhood. All right, CJ, I haven't heard that in forever, but my heart is just ready to yield and lean into it. So if those songs are sticking me, that, that perverted music you listen to, it's, it's, it's planted on your heart. See, your mind wasn't thinking about that. That flowed from your heart. And the abuse does the same thing. So now you was abused when you were a kid, and now he's abusing you, and you lean into it because abuse just flows. I'll take this because I had to take it. I'll deal with this because I had to deal with this. I'll choose this because I've always chose this. And that's why no matter who you surround yourself with, different people, same story. Different guy, different name, different height, different face, same exact relationship. Because your heart is looking for somebody that's going to agree with the lie that was sown into you. CJ, let's play one more, and I'm going to get ready to close. Play, play me one more. Okay, there we go. Next time, won't you sing with me? Check this out. So... The reason we have the ABC song, I did the history on this. We have the ABC song because when they would try to teach the kids ABCs, they didn't have enough analytical intellect to learn the song at a young age. They couldn't consciously learn that song. So what they did was they put the ABCs in a song because they can learn their ABCs. They put it in a song. And because they can think through it, they just played that song into the kids. My daughter was one year, she was a year and three months, and she knew her whole ABCs because of that song. She couldn't even consciously learn ABCs that young, but she can learn it through the music because the music passed her mind and went straight to her heart. And some of you guys don't even know your ABCs. You gotta sing this song, say, say your ABCs, A, B, C, D. You don't even know it. You need the song. You didn't even learn it. You just learned the song, and you need the song to know your ABCs. Why? Because music is powerful, and the enemy uses it as a tool to play his lies into you, his agenda into you, false identity into you. He plays these things on your 
heart. And you have to be willing to take a stand and say, I'm going to guard my ears so I can guard my heart. I'm going to guard my ears so I can guard my heart. Some of you guys are allowing the enemy to have your ear and wonder why sin is penetrating your heart. Some of you guys are letting the enemy have your ear and wonder why anxiety is penetrating your heart. You have to take control back. Don't be seized by the enemy. Get your life back. Music is powerful and it has the ability to directly come inside of you and the devil knows it and he uses it and the, the best musicians, most of them work for the enemy. The best singers, most of them sing for the enemy. The best producers, most of them produce for the enemy. When you look at the world's music, it is grand, it is big, it is explosive because the enemy dominates that market because this is native tongue. He's used to music and he's used to lying. So he gets music and he lies through it. To come and steal your heart. Radiant right Church, guard your eyes, guard your feet, guard your ears, and guard your heart. Come on, let's give our king a shout of praise. Wow. I pray you was blessed by that message. I pray it spoke to you and encouraged you, challenged you, and stretched you. Share with your friends, family members, coworkers. Share with everyone you know, and I pray their life will be impacted as well. If you would like to be a part of Radiant Ministry, a part of Radiant Global, or get more information about our church, text 903-201-0606. Text more information. We will tell you all about our ministry. And also, if you would like to partner with Radiant financially, you can do that at RadiantChurchTSK.com and hit the Give tab. It is your generosity that fuels our mission, and it empowers us to be able to do ministry all around the world. Thank you so much for your generosity and have a blessed day.